Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. When Pakatan Harapan took over the government in May 2018, the first thing they did was change the speaker. They didn't want to retain the old Barisan National Speaker. They wanted their own speaker. But the problem was they couldn't decide who should be the speaker. DAP wanted Lim Kit Siang. PKR wanted Nurul Iza Anwar. Mahathir, however, had his own candidate, which is Arif Yusuf. So there were three parties, three groups quarrelling over who should be speaker. Finally, Mahathir won and Arif was appointed the speaker. Mahathir wanted to make sure that he could control parliament through the speaker. In the event he needs, for example, to block a vote of no confidence against him. Because Mahathir's main worry was there would be a vote of no confidence against him and he will be ousted as Prime Minister and will be replaced with Anwar Ibrahim. The deal was Mahathir will rule for only two years, after which, in May 2020, he would hand power to Anwar. But Mahathir never intended to hand power to Anwar in May 2020. And this was revealed by one of the PBBM leaders, Wan Saiful. So from the very beginning, Mahathir did not want to hand power to Anwar. He just said he's going to be there for two years. Then he said maybe longer than two years. Then he said maybe even three years, maybe even to the end of his term. He kept moving the goalposts. He kept changing the date of handing over. And the only way they could force Mahathir to step down would be through a vote of no confidence. And the Speaker will decide whether a vote of no confidence can be tabled in Parliament. So, it was very crucial for Mahathir's plan that the Speaker is his man and that the Speaker will block any attempt for a vote of no confidence against him. This is what Mahathir did and this is why he wanted to control who is going to be the Speaker. Now, Pakatan is no longer the government. Perikatan National is a government. And Imoiden also, just like Mahathir, wants to make sure that the Speaker is not going to be Mahathir's man. What's wrong? The issue is, if the Speaker is Mahathir's man, if Arif stays on as Speaker, then if there's any vote of no confidence against Mohidin, the Speaker will of course allow it. Because the Speaker wants to bring down Mohidin. And he will collaborate, he will cooperate with Mahathir to push the vote of no confidence to bring down Mohidin. So it makes common sense for Mohidin to make sure that the Speaker is not Mahathir's man. He is not Mahathir's agent. That's all. Now why is uh, Pakatan making so much noise, uh, especially DAP and PKR, when in the first place they didn't even want Arif as Speaker. And they knew that Mahathir put Arif as Speaker so that Anwar cannot bring him down. This was Mahathir's defense, Mahathir's protection against any attempt by DAP and PKR to pass a vote of no confidence against Mahathir so that Anwar can take over as Prime Minister. So you see, Pakatan is uh, taking the Malaysians, the Malaysian voters for a ride. Talking about justice, talking about democracy, whereas is within the right of the Prime Minister, which is Moedin Yassin, to change the speaker. There's nothing unconstitutional or illegal about that. So, why the big issue? The next issue that they are making noise about is uh, the Agong was behind a palace coup. Uh, it was a royal coup. 
to bring down the government. Now that has been revealed many times by His Majesty the Agong himself. That he tried to persuade Mahathir to withdraw his resignation, pull back his resignation. Mahathir refused. Mahathir insisted that his resignation stands. And even with the Agong trying to persuade Mahathir to withdraw his resignation, he did not want to. So the Agong had no choice but to call all the 222 members of parliament to ask them one by one who they want as a new prime minister because according to the federal constitution of Malaysia, the Agong shall appoint a prime minister from amongst the members of the house, which means one of the 222 members of parliament who, in the opinion of the Agong, has the confidence of the majority of the house. In other words, who has the most number of MPs uh, behind him? He or she will become the, the, the new prime minister. So the Agong summoned 222 members of parliament to the palace and interviewed them one by one, who they want as prime minister. And the majority said, Moedin Yassin. If the majority has said Anwar Ibrahim, then Anwar would, be, would have been sworn in as the new Prime Minister of PMA. But the majority did not mention Anwar. The majority mentioned Mohidin Yassin. So, according to the Constitution, what the Agong legally has to do is to appoint Mohidin Yassin, swear in Mohidin Yassin as the new Prime Minister. Why did the 222 members of parliament or the majority of the 222 members of parliament not mention Anwar? Why was Anwar not chosen by the majority of the 222 members of parliament? And that is because the majority did not want Anwar. They did not want Anwar as prime minister. And Mahathir also did not get the support. Because the only reason they chose Mahathir as a prime minister was to bring down Najib, to bring down Amno, to bring down Barisan National. So they supported Mahathir as prime minister for the sole purpose of bringing down the government. Now that the government has been brought down, they don't need Mahathir anymore. Why would they want Mahathir as Prime Minister? However, they don't want Anwar either. So the logical choice would be Moedin Yassin. And that's why the majority of the 222 members of parliament mentioned Moedin as their choice of Prime Minister. The Agong's hands were tied. All the Agong could do was appoint one of the members of parliament who has the majority support as the prime minister. The Agong cannot determine who becomes prime minister. The 222 members of parliament will have to determine that. And that was what happened. So all this other propaganda, all this other talk about uh, ousting the government, bringing down the government, palace coup and all, is all nonsense. There is a story behind all this. It is a legitimate event, but they're trying to make it as if it is illegitimate, as if it was an illegal move, which is not true. So that's a real story. The rest which uh, Pakatan is spinning is just to justify, just to try to explain the embarrassment they are suffering regarding the mistake they made and how they shot themselves in the foot and they lost the government because of their own stupidity. To cover their stupidity, they tried to make as if there was an evil plot behind the scenes to bring down the government, which is absolute nonsense. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.